Welcome to Gary Newman's cars. This week we're at Snetterton and hopefully I'm going to be driving four supercars. Today I'll be taking part in the supercar experience held here at the Snetterton race circuit. The circuit is located on the site of a former World War II American airbase and began its motorsport life in the hands of a group of Aston Martin enthusiasts. Now, events like the Formula Ford Festival and the awesome TVI Tuscan Race Series take up much of the track's time. I've been looking forward to this. I'll be driving an excellent selection of supercars here today, and first, after my initial warm-up laps in the ODS3, will be the Lotus Esprit. V8, 349 horsepower and a top speed of 175 miles an hour. Then, the legendary Porsche 911. A bit of town happy I'm told, especially in the wet, so hopefully it won't rain today. But also with a top speed of around 170 miles an hour, it's another car I'm definitely excited about driving. Next up, the Ferrari 355. With a 375 horsepower engine and a top speed of 183 miles an hour, it's possibly the fastest car here today. Now here's the car I'm most looking forward to driving, the Dodge Viper. My wife Gemma has been trying to get me to buy one of these for ages. I just might after today. First things first though, into the control room for the all important briefing. Now I've seen the cars close up, I'm keen to get on with it. If a splendid afternoon, you know, how can you go wrong? Race circuit, bit of sun, and these four things. It's going to be excellent, I hope. So first of all, the Ferrari, you know, 380 horsepower. Just to put that in perspective, I think your average sort of two litre family car will probably be about 130 horsepower. So we're talking nearly treble the power of a normal regular two litre car. And then we've got the Dodge Viper eight litre engine. What were they thinking of? And then lose their mind, you know, originally designed for a truck, that engine, so eight litres of power. Porsche 911, you know, renowned as a bit of a supercar, and then the Lotus Esprit on the end. Again, loads of power, big turbo on that one, so great fun to drive. So you've got four absolute beauties. So how it's all going to run, initially once we've uh, had a short briefing and we've got your helmets and that sort of thing, you're going to have a couple of sessions in the Audis. Now the Audis are great cars for starting off in because they're you know, pretty much a, a regular type of car, good and quick, nice handling, very safe, uh, and you're going to do two 15 minute sessions in those. And by the end of the two 15 minute sessions, you're going to know Snetton really very well indeed. And you're also going to have a great idea of the racing line, how that works, where that goes, and the technique as well. So we're really going to try and prepare you for the four supercars. First of all, there's the racing line. Now that's the most important thing we're going to do initially because the racing line is the smoothest, it's the fastest, and very importantly, it's the safest route through the corners. We're using the width of the road to straighten the corner out. Obviously, if we were coming up this side of the road, when we got to here, we'd have to turn much tighter than we do here. If we're turning tighter, we're going slower, so it's not as quick. Your number two job is to begin to get the technique. And the good news is that, again, the technique is not tricky because you're doing... The briefing exactly was the thorough and covered the safety, course. the different flags used by the marshals, the and some good advice. Not very attractive, but it stops you sweating onto your helmet. And who wants that? So that's me briefed, kitted up and helmet on. Hopefully my endless hours of racing around this track on my computer will be put to good use on the real thing. My first car was uh, a Morris Marina estate, which my dad bought for me. Actually, it was, uh, I still remember the registration, it was an L, -Reg, L -Reg, old 73. Um, so it wasn't that old when I got it, so yeah, my dad did a a brilliant, brilliant thing to get me a car. I know it, it's now considered to be a, like a crap car. I think Jeremy Clarkson's worst car ever. But uh, I, you know, as a, as a young kid for a first car, it was really, really cool. And I was uh, the, the envy of my friends. I was very lucky. When I was a kid, I was a loner. Spent most of my time indoors, dreaming about being a pop star and writing songs and writing stories. He used to just write all the time. Yeah, being given a, an essay to do for homework was a joy for me. I used to, everyone used to moan about it. I used to love it. You know? would always write ten times more than they'd asked me to. Um, then as I got older, I, uh, I, just, I was never a, a going out, clubbing sort of bloke. Ne never was. I, you know, when I got old enough to drive myself, um, I was already starting to put bands together. So again, as 
yeah. driving to a rehearsal room to rehearse. I wasn't going out that much. Um, and, and even now, I'm not really that, that way inclined. So I've never been a smoker, a drinker, or a fighter. I've never gone out and had fights. So never been into football and all those blokey sort of things. Um, never been drunk, ever, in my life. Never. Don't drink, never have drunk. And it's not as if, I, it's not a moral thing for me. I don't wave flags against it, say what a bad thing it is. I just don't like it, so I, I don't do it. Finally, I'm ready to go. First up, the LDS3, where I have a few laps to learn the circuit and some driving techniques, like finding where the turning points and the braking points are, and then, hopefully, I'll be ready to get in the supercars. Have you been around Snetterton before, Gary? No. You haven't? Okay. Only in my PlayStation Touring car game. <laughs> OK. I've been here a couple of times to watch uh, Tuscan racing, but I've not been on the track. Right, OK. Well, we've got uh, cones set up to mark the turning in points and the clipping points. Right. So what we're going to do is, um, is just drive to those cones. OK. OK. Um, we're using third, fourth and fifth all the way around. And I, what I'll do is I'll, I'll talk you round, uh, and we'll just go from there. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now if we just get left of that white line, um, that's it. Into fourth. This is actually fourth gear corner. So there's the turning point for this corner. We turn in. Leave about a car's width on the first clip point there, and then clip where that fallen down cone is. And the exit point is on the end of this curb, just there, that's it. Um, now this red cone is the braking point, so we brake and change down to third, up to this blue cone, off the brakes, turn in, clipping point where the green cone is, and then come out and just straddle the white line. Oh Christ! Uh, pull over to the right. You shouldn't have done that. You all right? <laughs> And fourth gear, yep. And turn her in right over the drain cover. That's excellent. It all seems to be going quite well. What I really want from this day is not to learn how to race, but to handle a car at speed. My own road car is very quick, and the skills learnt here could definitely help me out on public roads in emergency situations. I have a good instructor, so that helps. Once you get the car up on its toes and moving about a bit, then you can play it on the throttle and the steering. It's funny because, right. you know, just... to me, because that's such a new experience, that, that feels like I'm just about to jump in at the deep end a bit. Do you know that... Well, you were handling it very well. I mean, it's, it's oh, a we're question of, yes, we're going in the pits now. It's just a question of balance, really. So you're feeling all the messages coming through your hands and through your feet and through your backside. Yeah. It's funny, yeah, you because know, you can feel the car is moving around, yeah. and then you're saying, put your foot down, I'm going, what? Yeah, <laughs> he mad. Yeah. <laughs> but it works, you know, but it's, it's having that confidence to commit to that um, when everything about, you know, normal driving is telling you not to. Yeah, you've turned it in, then you're off the throttle, so it all feels a bit light. As soon as you put your throttle on it, it's being pushed forward. Yeah. So it's then it's under control. And so this, the trick is to turn in and floor it, or feed it quick. Don't have a big, a big gap between turning in to the corner because if, and if, then putting your foot on the throttle. If you've got no throttle on, what's that, that the car is... Well, the centrifugal force is going to take over, you see. So the car drives it back onto the so ground it, again. That's right, yeah. We'll start pushing it forward, you see. Yeah. It all makes sense, but it's, it's, when, it, when it's happening... It's having, the, it's having the confidence to do yeah, it in the first yeah. place. Once you've done it a few times, it starts to come naturally, you see? Yeah, at the moment, I'm fighting against instinct. That's the, right, yeah. It just, yeah. Oh, that's a bit too fast, so well, you go the other way. I tell people, instinct will kill you one day <laughs> in this game. <laughs> <laughs> that's it with the Audi, and everything is going well. I've had some good, exciting laps on the track. Looks like the playtime spent on my computer might actually have helped. I never get road rage, and for one simple reason, I, I am very, very aware that I'm only five foot eight, and that I can't fight for love nor money, and that uh, if I get cut, my career's over probably. <laughs> you know, somebody beats me up, 
That'll be the end of that. Won't be able to have a picture on my face on covers anymore. Um, but basically, because I know I'm, I'm only little and I can't fight. So, see, road rage is all well and good if you can stay shut in your car. You know, we, we go back to the old cars thing, don't you know, we? But truth is, if, if further down the road there's a red traffic light and this man that you've just been really shouting at comes up beside you and he gets out and he's almost certainly going to be bigger than me, um, I have no chance whatsoever. So I, I do not get into it. No, it's not worth being punched, you know, for the sake of 20 feet of road. I worked it out once. <laughs> this is how anarchy I get. If, you, if you're, your average journey home is sort of 30 or 40 miles an hour, you know, probably less than 90. But if your average journey home is like that, the, the amount of time it takes you to do 20 feet, you know, the amount of space that this person's just cut in front of you is nicked off of you, because you, know, you we all think it's our road. You know? Um, it's something like one and a half seconds, one and a quarter seconds. So is it worth getting into a fight with a very large man in a Ford Escort in front you know, and his two mates in the back um, for the sake of getting home one and a quarter seconds quicker? I don't think it is. Welcome back to Gary Newman's Cars. I'm here at Snetterton Race Circuit today to drive four supercars. I've had my practice laps in the Audi, so now I'm with my instruction in the Lotus Esprit. Nice car to look at, but it's a bit uncomfortable with a helmet on. That's it. Couldn't feel more different. Exactly, yeah. It's um, very precise, this car is. Okay. Skittish, yes, off you go. Third? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Keep both hands on the wheel until you want to change gear. Again? Keep both hands on the wheel until the moment you want to change gear. Yeah, okay, so um, that's it. So that's avoid steering with one hand. This car is very quick, so I need to be careful to begin with. Spinning off and this would be an embarrassing start to my supercar day. Ah, sorry, I'm doing that thing again while leaving my hand there. Don't worry, don't worry. At least you know you've done it. That's a habit I've got in my car. My car has a bigger um, tub here, and I, I do tend to sit with it. And it's terrible, I know, but I... I... See, basically, um, these are, all these little habits are picked up on the road where you're in a very relaxed state most of the time, mm. aren't you? And you yeah. just pick up all these little bad little habits. We're out in the Porsche next. Um, and that's got a lot of different handling characteristics to this. See, this being a mid-engined uh, car is pretty well balanced. Now, the Porsche has got its engine hanging out the back of it. So it makes it, um, uh, well, I wouldn't say tail-happy as such, but it doesn't like uh, what we call lift-off oversteer, um, or mid-corner lift-off for a long period. So the back starts to overtake the front then. Really? Yeah. So it's, so it's more prone to one another? Let go at the back than this car is, for example. Yeah, yeah. Although, um, once you know about it, you can actually use that um, oversteer tendency to reposition the car in the middle of the corner if you have to. By allowing just it a, to come out. Yeah, yeah, just a quick lift, back comes out, put it, put it on again, you see. <laughs> if you just feel it, well, the speeds we'll be doing, you'll just feel it move slightly, that's all. Yeah. It won't, uh, it's nothing violent. Sounds a bit daunting, but hopefully I'll get the hang of it. My foot is right off the floor. Yeah. That's that brake pedal. Yeah, it does feel a bit strange, doesn't it? Hard to imagine finesse, really, when you can't yeah. regulate it against your heel. Well, when you're not used to seeing a sort of a wide expanse of car out on this side, is it? <laughs> it's now then. Brakes in third. Ah! <laughs> missed the clutch completely. <laughs> and they're off, they're off set, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm pushing the brake down. Turn into the corner, put your foot on the throttle hard, and then have a lift to go on it again. Lift off, lift off. See how, see? See how it moved? Changed direction, didn't yeah. it? It's a bit scary, that. Oh, but you can use that characteristic to your own advantage, you see? Yeah. 
So if you've got a little bit of understeer in the corner, little lift, back comes around, plant it again. So that's a way of overcoming understeer in a car like this? Isn't it? Yeah, great. Just lift, lift, lift the back end, the weight at the back takes over. Yeah. Just for a split second to reposition the car. Influence is, a, is a, a vital part of creating stuff. You know, anyone that, that writes anything is influenced by other people because it, 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 I think for one thing it shows an open mind and, and to be able to take in new ideas that you can then use for what you do is a very important part of being creative and so um, I, I never take much, put my stock in these people that say oh, I'm totally original because they can't be because if, if, if you don't listen to what else is going on, you anyway. Not really the answer you're after, but influences have been very important to me over the years. I always have been and still are now. So people like um, T-Rex, when I first started to really seriously write music, Mark Bowen was a big one. Um, when I first got into electronic music, there was a band called Ultravox that was around when I was around. Um, I, I liked what they did quite a lot. Um, I, I, I tend to listen to mainly things that I can get ideas from, um, so I kind of pick the brains of other people. And these days, oh, there's, a, there's a huge amount of people really, but you know, nine inch nails and get that kind of heavier, heavier kind of stuff. Now it's time for the Ferrari 355. Beautiful to some, although not to men all honesty, but it is pretty. I used to have a Ferrari Boxer, which was stunningly fast, so it'd be interesting to see how the 355 compares. Just brilliant. But finally, the one I've been most looking forward to, the awesome Dodge Viper. Off you go, Gary. Oops, fell out. That's it. We've got third gear there. It's hard over. Yeah, go on, there you go. Oh, an incredible car. But there was a problem with her gear. It wasn't me. That's it. Ooh, this feels uh, more lively. <laughs> I don't know what's doing that. I'm not getting that, it forward that, enough, maybe. Is that clutch on the floor, is it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm hard on the floor. Well, it's probably had a bit of abuse during the day, I expect. <laughs> Oops. Second then. Yep, then my good way you go. That's it, ready to change. Good one. Oh dear. Come What's out. That? Come out. Oh. <laughs> I thought I'd hit a cone then. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent job, Gary. Well done. Thank you. Well Thoroughly done. enjoyed that. Well, Gary, how do you think you got on today? I was quite happy, actually, to be honest, with most of it. The, um, the little Audi car was, was a really good introduction to it, and I, yes, I learned the, the, you know, the, the, the track and, and the, the left side. It was really just getting used to all the different cars and, and learning the differences from one car to another. But I loved it. I had a really good time. What impressed me was that um, uh, you did um, the first lap out, and by the, the end of the second lap, 
you had the circuit pretty much in your mind and it wasn't a problem anymore, was it? It's, it's, well, I think luckily, first of all, I, I, I've been here watching racing. I've come to, to watch, watch Tuscans before and stood on various parts around it. So, and, I, and I have spent many, many laps in my touring car. Okay? Yeah. But also, it's not that complicated a track, is it? It's, it's relatively no, it's simple. Not. It and I'm studying the well. map up in the briefing room as well. Yeah. So, looking at yeah. so um, I mean, you've got the, 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 the cones, which are colour code is, so you know what a broken cone in a turning cone. And all that helps, it makes a lot of difference. So, um, it, it, it's not a, a, a massively difficult thing to learn anyway, I don't think. Mm. But it, it, obviously, until you do learn it, you can't start going any quicker. This business, coming up the end of the straight here, mm -hmm. and then going into that corner in there, that... that Riches, yeah. As you you said before, you sort of go in wider than you would think, and you sort of come across, and you can feel. And but then you got me to really be working the throttle, the going throttle, through it, yeah, yeah. and you can just feel the car yeah. gripping on. Gripping on and it really flies out of yeah, there, isn't it? And it was, yeah. it was so exciting. Yeah. I love, I love that one. It's really good. <laughs> but I, I love that. It was great. I mean, every corner has its own particular. Charm, doesn't it? Isn't yeah, it? Yes. There isn't a corner on the track. I didn't think that was you, you could just sort of relax on it. No, no, I just get around these next two because the good one's coming up. And it wasn't like that at all. That's right. Yeah. I, I was having a great time. I enjoyed this much, much more than I expected to. Yeah, I really did. And I was able, and you got such a brilliant way of putting it over in the heat at the moment. And I'm hot and sweaty. Fire it quick. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for this week. Join me next week on Gary Newman's Cars. Next week, a change of scene because I'll be going to a rally school driving a Subaru Impreza. See you then. Yeah.